pretty much unscathed. He's gonna use his maneuverability most likely to try to get around the eye but the infantry's coming on in. Oh my god, look at the crush! Hello everyone, this is Grayshaw17, and today I'm covering a 4v4 on the map Red Ball Express, submitted by one of my patrons, which is somewhere in here. You can find that out at the end, but right now let's go over who is in here, which is 404, uh, PBJ, we have, oh god, uh, Fishburger, that's what I'm gonna be calling him. We also got, uh, Rich Master, so I'll just call him Master. Uh, the Desert Fox Gara, which I'm assuming is a Naruto reference, uh, Forsaken. Joey G240 and 5th Carry Division. One Brit, one Soviet, two Americans versus two OKW and Austere. Uh, well, three o OKW and Austere. And two Kubels. Master, I'm already interested in what your play is. But my play is very simple to get you to enjoy the content. And, of course, if you do like it, like, subscribe for the ch uh, video and the channel. It really does help. As well as if you would li like to go one step beyond that, uh, my Patreon's down below. That's how this person submitted, uh, submitted it as a Patreon supporter. And... Lastly, uh, if you would like to support the channel with, with some merchandise, I do have some actually merch that you can get, uh, hopefully reasonable prices uh, for everyone. Try to make sure they're reasonable for new design shirts from my channel, as well as some older designs returning on a new site called Fourth Wall. Highly recommend it down below. And again, if you do do it, uh, for example, uh, someone bought a shirt today and I sent them a personal thank you via video. So, uh, pretty cool stuff right there. What's hilarious, though, is uh, Sternfinder is retreating due to a lots of Rashalon, which, yes, uh, we will be getting the Allied Infantry for the tier list soon. And it seems like most people enjoyed it, except for uh, the JLIs, which, again, we'll see how many are in this game since we have three OKW, since everyone says they are the best infantry uh, from the comment section. So we'll see how that goes. Rifemen are advancing with Rashalon backing them up. Kubel's taking some hits, though. That definitely just a little bit of health damage. Uh, Forsaken went with Rifle Company. Uh, nothing else for any side. Kubel's on the retreat. Is he getting any support from his ally? No, they're actually going for a flanking maneuver. Hey, since you're all there, uh, you're not here. And since you're not there, no resources for you. Rifleman could stop that, but Kubel and Sturm have enough firepower to put an end to it. Looks like on the other side, 404. And PBJ are holding back the Soviets. Going, by the way, Penals for heavy infantry. And infantry section backing them up, but again, having a little bit of trouble. Kubel's taking hits. Uh, Pioneers surprisingly holding back the, the Penals from afar. Uh, at least for a little bit of time. The counterattack did work. The Allies forced... Interesting. The Allies forced the Axis back, but it they now have to recapture this in order to get that fuel that, well, they need. Right now, it's the only fuel they have on their side. The Axis have their fuel pretty much controlled. Um, there is a possible penal attack that could be gearing up on this side, but with enough Volk and Sturm, I don't see the Soviets really doing all that well. Simply because the Volk squads can do shout damage and throw incendiary if they try to gain cover. There's a satchel that's going off, but the Germans are well aware of that and dodge, and the Volk and Sturm are now going to advance. Penals are stronger than Volk, but the Sturm has enough firepower close range to really shred them, and then Volk squads at, burn about the Penals in cover, and you got yourself a bad combination of, well, a lot of retreating Soviets. Anyway, 5th uh, carry went Vanguard Operations, so okay, airstrikes and some good heavy armor with a nice flamethrower attachment. Engineer in the building, more of a delaying action, if anything. Another blob of forces, they dodge a grenade by the Rifleman Squad Desert Fox, and again, uh, they're still in a good enough state to help take mid and push elsewhere, which I like how these Kubels got healed up, most likely either by his Sturm or by uh, Fishburger. Again, a little, good, uh, a little bit of teamwork right there. So even though the Allies re, uh, will capture this location, they're really spreading out in mid, which is really bad for the Allies if they get all that munitions over to the Axis side. Penal's going to delay in the building, but they can always throw Incendiary and get him out. And there's also enough firepower here that hang in multiple directions. I don't see the penals lasting too long. Um, and there's their retreat. There is a cache going down to prevent uh, another decap. But again, the enemy puts enough pressure on it. They could kill it, which is 250 manpower down the drain. Risky maneuver from the allies. But also Kubel's walking in on a lieutenant, which does have a Thompson. Again, uh, it does have a decent close range ability right there. So again, we'll see how that fares. Uh, Kubel... Do, uh, the Kubels do put, uh, pull back. Sturm trying to hold back Lieutenant, but I don't know how they're going to fare against the Rifleman. Retreat path could screw them, but luckily they do pull back this way rather than running into the blob 
Always positive. Uh, Volk Squad, though, might not get the... Ch there is Retreat. That's what I was worrying. And he's just going to get in the middle of that one unit and just obliterate that guy. So, goodbye to the Volk Squad. Even if he did retreat, there's still this fighting position here. Which would have murdered him. Also, Incendiary could be thrown, right? From this position over, like, this forest area onto here. So, something to keep in mind. By the way, Kubel's firing from afar. Love it. And although this one's probably going to die to the penals. Great ears as well trying to help. Rifle Grenade could be incredible right there since they're all grouped up. Oh, Kubel's decrewed. Allied Kubel? Come on. Give me an Allied Kubel. All right. Uh, again, for those who are wondering what the Kubel does, I, we, I have the uh, ability to analyze uh, Veteran C along with some other units a little more thoroughly. So you can see here the Kubel, that T, get maximum speed, rotation speed, and acceleration, D, acceleration bonuses, right? Not really firepower bonuses, but it does help trying to get out of, uh, get out of uh, harm's way, which this one might not be able to do. No, it's not. Oh, by the infantry section, coming on in, is he upgrading? Oh, just grenades, okay. <laughs> Destroying all the cover on the way out? <laughs> Fuck you! Uh... But, uh, yeah, Volk Squad's now being backed up by a 2 2 2. Alright, pretty solid stuff there. Any German with. Okay, we have, again, Fishburger going with Falschmagers. Uh, that's my assumption based on the manpower he's saving up and also. Uh, yeah, just. Yep, there we go. He stopped it, so he's probably gonna get it. And also on this map, pretty good. If you can surprise the enemy, uh, made. May have some issues uh, compared to Obel Sadatin. With uh, maybe a little more survivability. But hey, if you get those full shimmers up to bed 5, they'll definitely hold their own. And again, group them up with additional infantry to fight off that blob. Which, by the way, Desert Fox, you are absolutely blobbing. But so too is 404 right there. And the infantry section by 5th Carrier. Incendiary Throne forcing them back. They are suppressed by a half-track of all things. Being brought up by Fishburger. Do we have any armor by the Allies? We do have the full shimmers dropping on in. Oh, wow, they dropped right on the front. And Kubel's, well, the Kubel's vet 2, barely alive. 2-2-2, two, 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 almost vet 1. Good counterattack by the Germans to push back the Brits. The attack on the far side, though, maybe not going as well as the Axis want. Most of the units are been pushed back. There's another Volk squad that got redeployed. Or more, more likely running away from the uh, riflemen that are there. Uh, let's see, this bazooka team and additional forces are guarding, so again, I don't see this unit lasting all that long in a fight. Uh, more doctrines have been chosen with Master going fortifications and Desert Fox going infantry company. So artillery for uh, both sides, so again, should be a interesting uh, addition, whoever can use that more effectively, if that's indeed what they're going. I'm assuming because Fishburger is deploying another Falschmanger squad, so we know what he's trying to do. We also know he maybe lost some men, but if he can, you know, he's like, yeah, I'll lose a bulk, but I'll get two false Schmager to kind of make up for it. Okay. A little risky, but it, you technically have a smaller army, so you get more manpower. So, we'll see. Snipers on the front. Do we have... Okay, so I've been talking a lot about the Germans. The Americans are healing up in the back. Forsaken has his uh, units on the front. Ooh, looks like they took... A number of hits, but riflemen are going to push back that Volk squad. Although there's a Puma on the field, so again, light armor for the Axis. But what about the Allies? Allies, have any light armor? We do. We have a Kubel, which is absolute. This is absolutely hilarious, the fact we have a Kubel run by Soviets. So that's pretty funny. Uh, but we have a T-70 in mid, and the Germans do have a T, so it needs to be a little bit more wary. But again, a solid infantry killer, especially for like a T-70 or something like that, where it's a very weak uh, single model or very low on health multi-model unit. So we'll see how things fare. T-70 can move on the storm because they have no AT right now, no Shrek, nothing. Destroys the cover, easily pushes back the German infantry. Sniper trying to push back the guard forces with DPs, by the way. So that does make them better against infantry along with their rifles natively that are good against um, light armor. Smoke is dro uh, dropped right on the rifleman. I don't know if that was on purpose or what. Puma slowly advancing. Um, interesting. It's actually got a number of infantry kills. Kubel, no! Oh god, this is not the fight he wanted. But, uh, I mean, oh my god, took two shots? Soviet Kubel has a dish. Oh, damn it. I was like, they had a KV armor to that thing. But, uh, no. Oh, we, we have, uh, Rishlons coming up with the flamethrowers, thanks to Rifle Company. 
I'm curious if we'll get the easy aid, but anyway. Uh, AT gun is barely alive, but does manage to get out of there, even though we lost half his men. Um, penals in the back foot. Smoke coming down with a infantry section. Again, Brens and five-man squads against uh, the Germans over here. PBJ is trying to reorganize himself. Also, this thing needs heals. But uh, he's slowly sending more troops over, along with 404 just condensing and reorganizing his men for a counterattack. Okay, they do have a mortar pit, they have a machine gun, and they have an AT gun. If they bring it up, I think the British have a good shot of holding. But again, that 222 is coming on in. They're going to need AT to deal with that. If G sections are treating, they do not have a forward position to heal, which could be an issue. Nice AT grenade on the 222, but this is where the AT gun needs to come on up. Fifth carrier, you really need to help finish off that 222. Alas, Grenadiers come on the flank. They really don't have the forces for it unless they get a nice Grenadier uh, hit. Rifle Grenade, perfect shot on the MG, and the MG-42 is from the Great Ears, will just shred the Vickers, and people are like, oh, great shot, I don't think Great Ears are all that great. Again, if used right, they can be, uh, and they can absolutely shred men. Uh, I think they're all both in the low teens for kills, which by the 11 minute mark, pretty solid. Meanwhile, MG-42 guarding the fuel, gave some an infantry counterattack. Mortar pick could focus, but they have to focus on a lot right now, as uh, we have a bunker over here along with Volk Squad's Moving along the right-hand side. Actually, I think, yeah, he's focusing on the bunker. Allied uh, counterattack is pushing the Axis back, so good job here by Forsaken and Desert Fox. Again, if they can lock down this territory, it gives them a little bit more uh, viability in the long term against, well, all these forces uh, that keep just hitting them. Because, again, they get additional fuel, and now maybe they allow them to uh, actually get something more substantial to hold them back. No. They did push back the Germans, and he definitely lost some infantry, I believe. I think he lost two Volk squads? Yeah, he lost two Volk. Okay. And, but unfortunately, he's getting a Stuka. That could definitely be uh, very detrimental to the act uh, to the Allies if they get a great shot. The question is, is he actually going to get a great shot? Because it's one thing to get a unit. It's another thing to actually use the unit. But the Puma has actually shown himself to be quite detrimental to the Allies. So I wouldn't cut uh, Master out entirely. Falschmakers have been upgraded with their, uh, well, uh, up with their additional rifles. Again, these things are pretty damn sweet, the FG-42s. Um, and again, right now, it's just getting these Volk squads up to, uh, with additional um, veterancy. So you get uh, less damage, again, more accuracy, more he you get healing, and then that first strike bonus. Uh, bundle grenades thrown, rifle, uh, riflemen are trying to back up, but false makers are trying to mow them down. The rifleman does escape. I don't know if that squad's gonna hold. Oh, wait, grenade! Oh, that was a decent grenade. A lot of health damage, all things considered. And, uh, nice. Uh, and with bars and additional riflemen, I think they'll be held back. But again, I think that AT gun's gonna need to help finish off the half track. Half track does run, which should allow the Americans to advance. Again, also a great job with the captain with that bar, shredding the Volk squad. On the far right, we have uh, Joey coming back uh, with his penal forces. By the way, going guard rifle. Uh, the Axis have gone with Elite Armor Doctrine. Okay, so again, Sturm along with additional heat rounds. Could be very solid with a Panzer IV to like upshot a Jackson or even a KV if it needs to. Oh, and with a Panther or a King Tiger. Yeah, I don't care how much armor you have. It's going to be penned. Uh, if G section trying to push up, throw a grenade on the Grand Ears. Grand Ears do dodge. Uh, bunker can't hit them, so if she section should be okay. But the 222 injured, still a threat, and still a rather large annoyance. Uh, penal forces, though, having trouble with the bunker. Uh, smoke probably needed to be dropped from the uh, mortar pit, but alas, it's dead. And the other mortar, while alive, is kind of focused on the bunker, which I get. But maybe smoking is better than uh, just bombing, because then you could get close and throw a satchel on it. Um, also, again, with the Doctrine, has a great serving strafe. If he could definitely use that to shred this MG and additional infantry if they stand still. So, something to consider in the near future. The one thing I will say, though, is the Allies are covered in most areas, right? Wait, something... Oh, it hit the back line? And I think he just hit his own men. I think that Soviet airstrike just hit his own men. But, luckily, uh, while there was a lot of smoke, it didn't... Um... And, I mean, red smoke by the blood loss... It doesn't look like he's dead, so that's uh, that's positive. <laughs> he's just mortally crippled until he gets a medic. 
Volk squads and uh, false makers are trying to do battle in mid against the riflemen. On the far side, we have a deep dive by the rear echelon of all things, but I don't think they have the uh, survivability long term, and they're going to retreat. Puma again might be able to get a couple of tree on the retreat, one or two models. Again, every little bit helps. Uh, but again, worst case scenario, it's just less forces forsaken can send the mid right now, and right now, uh, Fishburger is doing a great job of capturing that territory. Although, again, great job on the allies. They do have this position, and I like this, so you can't flank straight up. You have to go around. Don't be wrong, 404 is definitely having the blob to go around, and looks like he did manage to capture a six-pounder, which is a good steal. Again, any sort of support equipment you can take from the allies, I would say is a nice win, because it's less stuff you have to build later. And double AT, especially right now, is really going to hammer the allies if they deploy anything. Which, by the way, Joey's uh, T-70 did not last very long. Um... Damn, uh, unfortunately for him, uh, don't know what happened to it, but yeah, it absolutely did not last very long. Germans on the mean, uh, meanwhile have a Panzer IV. Uh, we have ourselves Jagdpanzer being deployed. Like, we got some good armored units for the Germans. Uh, Sniper on standby helping to wear down the MG. Uh, there is a Cromwell coming in by 5th Carrier. I think it's the first Allied armor, KV-1 being made. Uh, Jackson being made. So the allies are bringing out more stuff, which is good. They need that. Uh, we also have a couple caches down on both sides. Uh, looks like PPJ put down caches to help his team. Meanwhile, it looks like a mixture of Forsaken and Desert Fox are the ones on the allied team. So again, I like the teamwork. Both sides are realizing this is going to be a longer fight. So they're making sure that they can, you know, actually commit to that. Allies are a bit down in overall uh, VPs, about 170 points. Great kill on the MG. Rifleman pushing on in. It looks like on the far side, well, maybe uh, Masters Puma has done... Oh, wow, okay, no kills. Okay, got that one, so solid stuff. Mostly when you're fighting infantry, I'd say that's a bit of a win. Um, got an easy 8. It's going to be hard to fight. Oh, sorry, you got easy 8, not Jackson. Oh, no, 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 he... There is a Jackson. Okay, Desert Fox got Jackson. So, yeah, all the allies have armor. Good, good, good. Uh, another combo being brought up by 5th Carrier. A little iffy on that, but whatever. If he uses it well, he uses it well. Uh, we'll have to see. Penals, maybe not being used well. And the strike does come on in. Knocks out the AT gun, which might allow the KV-1 to try to finish off that, uh, Panzer IV and Bren. So just gonna be very cautious with the, that amount of infantry coming in to, uh, Faust. Now, again, these guys are getting better in C, and it seems like the Soviets and the Brits have been unable to put these guys down. Um, I say that as a KV almost runs them all over. Is he going to shot them all while they're grouped up? Nope, he missed. Infantry section trying to wear them down as well. But, uh, yeah, they got pushed back. Grenadiers got... Wow. Heck of a shot by the KV-1. Infantry section, though, counterattacking. Panzer IV now going to have a rough time. A T-gun, though, is recruited and firing on the KV-1. Uh, but there's a Cromwell coming on into support. Again, small, some moves by uh, Fishburger in mid, but right now the main focus is 5th Carrier. Joey's counterattack on the right. German forces grab the fuel back, but uh, nice job by Desert Fox grabbing the munitions. Might not even be close to his technical front, but he's like, hmm, the axes aren't there. I'll decap it under their noses. And uh, yeah, it worked out pretty damn well. Rechelon getting the building just as a delaying action, but Falschmakers again getting that veterancy. Sweet, sweet veterancy, slowly but surely. Three Falschmaker squads. Again, uh, this can be a little bit more costly as he progresses because, again, it is a bit more to reinforce. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how things fare. Uh, do we have any... We do not have any Obelstadaten. Okay. We do have a lot of Volk. Again, I'm glad that he managed to uh, have a medical close to the front. But, again, artillery could hurt that. Uh, so, again, something to consider. But at least able, with that, the Volk squads will be able to ca come back pretty quickly. Um, Soviets will take a little bit more time along with the Brits to reinforce and come up. They don't have a reinforce point. The Allies do. They have a major position. Actually, two of them uh, close by. Uh, let's see. Axe is trying to advance further, but the infantry with LMGs is just too much, and they're going to pull back. Again, um, some people say, I, I saw someone being like, Falsh make your shred. It's like, yeah. Well, there was um, a couple units there, and uh, they had a bit of a rough time versing some decent infantry. So, though, it's not a one-sided affair always with Falschmakers against allied infantry. You give the riflemen uh, right equipment and they can absolutely shred. But so, too, will Yagpons over Kenworth against this Jackson. Unfortunately, Desert Fox may have walked into a trap. Uh, he's going to pull back and luckily he does get out. Yagpons wasn't able to get a second shot. 
Um, half track though did get hit, although just you know needs a little bit of repairs, nothing too major. And it looks like the Axis do have repair stations, though they need upgrades. Uh, PBJ went spearhead, so I don't know if he's gonna save it for a tiger with the Panzer IV, but. Oh, great shot with that Katusha. Oh, and they're retreating, man. Oh, my God. Well, uh, there goes all the Volk squads. Uh, artillery and infantry smash them to bits, and they are down to one unit. Panther trying to advance. Again, he does have heat rounds, which could be an issue, but three against one with a KB and two Cromwells are going to make this Panther possibly regret itself. But Panzer IV also trying to engage. Nice shot with the six-pounder. Knocks out a Cromwell. That's pretty hilarious in my opinion uh, killed with your own allied weapon panther going in for the kv1 kill again now he's using oh sorry just to go off heat rounds probably might try to go for the kill here panzer 4 though assisting with the m1 they advance further they could be ko'd by either uh british forces taking heavy losses by that panzer 4 though again 404 definitely took a lot of frontline infantry hits though it has plenty of manpower 800 for both 404 and pbj meanwhile joey has 30 uh, since he reinforced a lot of his men. By the way, some great veterans on his penals. And, P and uh, Fifth Carrier doesn't have a lot of manpower, which is going to hold back his infantry section. He's getting a Firefly, which is great, but it's they, that manpower, in instead of going to the infantry, is going to delay them coming back. So I don't suspect an allied counterattack of any major quantity anytime soon. But that might not be necessary as a easy 8 dives on in against uh, Master. Knocks out his Puma which is unfortunate but hey it looks like this thing is still walking around pretty much unscathed he's gonna use his maneuverability most likely trying to get around the eye Panzer, but the infantry's coming on in oh my god look at the crush although he does get a faust uh he does get fausted by the vault but still lots of infantry losses right there great job and smoke coming down by raken uh, unable to hit they hit the high wall fires a shot kills the yad Panzer. this easy eight cannot be Easily killed. Unfortunately, uh, he does finally get put down by enough uh, Shrek fire and stuff. And the Stern Pioneer will use his dead body as salvage to hopefully fund the war effort and get some, uh, you know, armor back up. But the damage is done. Uh, yeah, the Puma going down is a big loss because that's his major mobile AT. I mean, he has an AT gun, but like that Puma is about one. It's crit. Could definitely hamper a lot of um, access, or sorry, allied counterattacks. So this left flank could be a little bit more injured. We have Obel Sedan coming on in. Mortar carriage as well can put a lot of pressure on this guy's defensive line, uh, especially trying to kill the Howitzer, or sorry, the Howitzer, kill the um, LFH or Panzer Headquarters from afar. Kubel, I don't know what you're doing with that. Probably need to move up the Rakan Warfare, but again, solid infantry line. So Forsaken just gonna absolutely smash this guy with that, oh, and he needs support. But as we saw, Fishburger lost his Yag Monster, so he doesn't have a, a native armored unit to counterattack with his uh, his ally, nor does he have any major resources. He can't call on airstrikes. That's not happening. Panzer Headquarters is going to hold back the infantry, but the Rakadmorpher is already retreating. Uh, not too far, all things considered, but still, going to be pulled back for a moment. And that, uh, that might be enough time to hopefully take out this position. We'll see. Again, I'm hopeful that uh, if Forsaken... Which, by the way, a thousand manpower, all things considered, looking pretty solid uh, in terms of getting more men. And yeah, he's getting other easy aids, so it's not too bad for him. But yeah, still causing all sorts of havoc. And I think he has the biggest army outside of all the allies. Oh, wait, no! The, uh, nice fouls knocks out one of them again uh, while the infantry were busy. Or sorry, when they retreated, he didn't have anything to screen, and the, I guess the Volk Squad ran up and hit him. So, nice job. A Rekai can hit that mortar carriage. Again, very low. Stern Pioneer's trying to get this thing operational. Again, he does have a bit a higher repair rate. Though, again, uh, would be better if he... Oh, hold on. It would be better if he wasn't constantly under fire. Suka fires. Hold on. Does kill Reshlon. All right. All right. Oh, he probably should stop repairing. And get the hell out of Dodge. Mortar carriage probably needs to retreat if I was him. Again, he could risk it, but... It... It also Storm definitely needs heals. Oh, he's getting heals. Oh, that's cool. He's getting heals because he is barely close enough, which should hopefully keep this thing alive. Panzer IV being made. Try to hold the front. Recaptor for firing. Faust at the mortar carriage again. Forsaken really trying to push. Drop smoke. Direct shot could kill it. We'll see. Take the shot, man. Misses. But still, at least he gave it a good old try and mortar carriage still needs to pull back. Problem is that, uh... 
easy eight and also the Sadani just upgraded. It's probably gonna die to that shot, so that's unfortunate. Um, by the way, Lieutenant, what do you get? 30% and nice. Oh, it's already up to a quarter. Has the Shrek team. Actually, I probably would have the Shrek team fire and move this thing around. Uh, oh wait, we have a zeroing. Okay, that will absolutely hold back the ally or the Axis. Sorry, the, the allies. Axis should have probably placed a little further up, so more carriage was under fire. Uh, but he is still healing it. Panzer IV should be up shortly. Where is his ally? Oh, killing uh, Americans in mid. Ah, yes. Uh, Sturm Tiger, uh, wipe that squad. So again, uh, Desert Fox Gar will need to be uh, very careful. The Blob of Falschmayers is back, although I think he's down to two squads rather. Yeah, so we did lose one of the veteran squads. Again, I would say this is a Blob. Allies tried, but have been unable to counterattack on the right. Again, solid job by PBJ and 404 for holding. Also, the fact that 404 is not being pinned down and comes over to help kill the Americans in mid, not a great sign, especially with the Allies currently down about 260 points. Cromwell trying to assist in mid. Uh, again, Firefly backing him up. But Panthers on standby with heat rounds. That could be a big issue against a Cromwell. Any armored vehicle the Allies have that isn't something like a Churchill or uh, a KV-1. Which, by the way, speaking of which, KV-1, Vet-1, a decent kill rate on the far side. SU-85 backing him up, which could absolutely help, but looks like he did lose some of the penals that were veterans. So, unfortunately, again, it's going to be harder and harder for Joey to push in this sector. Uh, Population-wise, it looks like the Axis are averaging, eh, I would say, like, uh, low 70s, so not too bad. Um, and then Joey, along with the rest of the allies, with the carrier and such or actually they're in like mid 70s so pretty solid stuff all things considered uh we'll see maybe if something changes with this cromwell as, get, as it's currently being charged by three separate armies we ourselves uh although the americans guarding the vp false makers turn the corner again uh they're focusing on the false maker which is forced back grand ears from afar again decent kill rate about 40 kills total hitting the side more zeroing which holding back uh, the Americans from killing the Panzer headquarters. Now that thing is literally on life support. Oh, great artillery shot on that man. Oh my God, glad I saw that. Panzer four injured. Not enough uh, time, unfortunately. Or not enough it was done to save that uh, Panzer headquarters, which is gonna stop additional armor. Now they could possibly bomb this base. Um, yeah, again, I think Fishburger should help his teammate, honestly. It, it, again, if, PB and J and such are over there. I just realized Joey's still committed to this front. He doesn't have the biggest army, but he can still harass them. Knock out this bunker. Uh, they're going to micro their AT guns, but if they're busy in a fight in mid, they're less likely. I just realized there's also two tigers next to each other. Cool. So uh, that's something that the allies need to deal with. Again, AT fire and airstrikes could easily, you know, push that back. But it looks like resource-wise, Fit Carry doesn't have enough. There is white phosphorus, or smoke that also be called in. And, uh, hold on. Jackson and an M1 hit the tiger from the side. A T grenades, hold on. Once again, the tiger goes in with it and gets absolutely put down by the allies because he thought he could easily hold them back. Uh, no support given. And again, I think he's busy microing this front, which is why he did that. Uh, Cromwell could die, but that's nowhere near a good trade. Again, if you have a big armored unit, do not expect to be the big fish in a small pond. The small fish can still beat the crap out of you if they work together. Hell of an analogy, but whatever. Uh, Cromwell takes another hit, but does escape. If tree as well could snare the panther, which they will. Sturm Tiger, though, lying in wait, and uh, I think we're about to say bye bye to Desert Fox's men. Uh, give me a moment. Yes, that was a fantastic hit by 404 who is now vet one all things considered so amazing job right there king tiger uh was smart enough to not go into that ambush is gonna just chill in the back and uh wait for some easy targets mines being placed along uh fishburger's flank as well in case the americans decide to push on in but they're using their mortar carriages to fire from afar to wear down the infantry not a bad idea on the far right, KV-1, actually the, all the uh, Soviet armor is advancing. And with uh, the Germans pretty much at a lower uh, population due to sacrificing some of their forces in mid, they're not exactly easy, uh, easily able to counterattack. Hold on, KV-1 does escape, which is a loss for the Germans. That could have been an easy wipe for a major expensive Soviet unit. Unit Sniper though on the field will fire a, 
uh, a nice, uh, excuse me, a stunning shot, which again, incendiary shot, which could do some damage. Uh, Panther moving on in with heat rounds. Uh, hold on, calling it a direct straight on this, which he's not paying attention. Could be enough, but he is buttoned. Oh, I think he just paid attention. It was not fast enough. KV goes down, but it was not worth losing a Panther. So, again, 404 losing... Wait. Yeah, 404 losing his Panther. Tiger is still in mid. So, at least they have that. But Axe is losing a number of key units right now. Which is unfortunate. They seem to be more on the back foot as of late. But Penals are retreating. German forces pushing on in with a Stug. Always solid, reliable, light uh, anti-tank destroyer. S-85 could be hit. Does get hit. And they will press their advantage. Though, once again, the Firefly comes in. Clutch as 5th carrier knocks out the Stew with SV-85 support. They do now have the men or the firepower to deal with the KV and the SV-85. So while they could Faust again, it's not going to be a killing blow. It'll just be a more of a annoyance, right? Cromwell coming on in. Again, 5th carrier really trying to help his team. I like his positioning to help in mid and the right. He's really trying to be a fantastic teammate. Infantry section take the fuel as well so allies can get double fuel. Panzer IV is trying to kill this cache, but the... Uh, EC8s are like, nah, what you doing? I love the, I love the lieutenant running beside him with the bazooka, giving chase. Uh, Panzer IV trying to escape. Unfortunately, unable to, and EC8s, while taking a number of shots, and, uh, oh, my dire to Rakan were for, oh, Pack 43 is right there, and misses. EC8 goes down. Does get hit. Rakan were for repositioning. Ah, uh, oh, Forsaken, I think this was a bad call. AT gun hits there. Pack 43 could hit that unit on the retreat, though it looks like we have a direct strike coming in on it, so we'll see. He's going to maneuver himself this way, but a Shrek team is waiting. Only one, though. Not enough to kill the unit. King Tiger could have moved in. That would have been preferable, but it looks like a lot of the solid defenses that Master put up. God, it sound like an, an anime character. Uh... Did not, uh... Really hold up all that well. Snooka, unfortunately, does miss... So, again, the Earthmen are just able to just keep walking. And Master is pretty weakened at this state. God damn it. Every time I say that, I do sound like an anime character. Hey, yeah, retreat out of this position, man. White Phosphorus grenade thrown, but I think his Opal Sedan is done for if he doesn't get out of there immediately. And he will die to the Rifleman who decided to walk out of the White Phosphorus. He still have bars, man. Oh, my God. They're just murdering everything. Okay, finally cut off the, the you know... The reinforce points so we can actually run, but damage was done, and the Americans smashed a good chunk of Master's army. God damn it. Anyway, King Tiger got smoked, so he's gonna pull back temporarily. The Germans with their Stugs are actually putting up a solid fight. Looks like he's going mostly with Stugs, and the Grenadiers are helping get the infantry, uh, which again. They have a solid KD, all things considered, and pushing back penals. Volk Squad walking into a satchel, luckily retreats before having a bad case of the explosions. Grenadiers, though, still firing from afar with the sniper in need of health. Jagdpanzer is in mid, backing up the Sturm Tiger, which is just lying in wait for a poor American blob to come on in. Desert Fox is recouping his men, as well as having artillery that seems to be doing a decent job based on that kill count. The artillery is focusing on... Oh, the medical facility. Again, hoping to get an easy wipe or maybe knock out some armor. Oh, I forgot to check. What's the ranks of these guys? Which, by the way, again, rank doesn't really matter in this in this system. And again, I have a shirt, a uh, new shirt based on that. So if you want to check that out, please, highly recommend it. But anyway, uh, looks like overall it's a pretty solid game. Uh, both sides are pretty highly ranked. Stukes backing on up, but again, I could easily see a triple shot on the SU-85 knocking it out. Plus, we got that one, so they could stun some of that armor and make sure it can't retreat. But having trouble penetrating the KV, and SU-85 gets a great shot on that Stug. Double Stug, though, forced the SU-85 back after two direct shots. KV-1, though, moving on in with a Cromwell coming on the flank, but nice shot with the Rakan River does weaken it. Another uh, six-pounder fires from the back. Stug's backing on up. There's still another one that could stun it. Needs a stun. Nice kill right there. Stukes so though, very low. Get out of there. Faust could hit these KVs. Cromwell's done. Can we kill a KV? We do. That's two allied vehicles down. Stukes coming back for a triple shot on the KV with the Yagpons are backing it up. Fireflies, though, trying to make do. Stukes might be in for a world of hurt if they don't back up on those Fireflies. Rakanmuffer's still there, though. 
go right outside of range. Firing rockets, they missed the Stukes. Artillery is hitting the Volk squads in the back, which might be the cause of a lot of this front line damage. Um, nice shot with their Murphy does hit. The Icons are though very low. M1, I'm sorry, six pounders, apologies. Still hitting the Firefly. One last shot would do it, and it does. While they lose the Yagpanzer, the Firefly goes down. That's three allied units lost for a Yagpanzer. And you can take some infantry. Um, I think the Stukes all prevailed, right? Yeah, they all lived. So, uh, I, I, hold on. I would say, right, the Axis have a decent amount of fuel. Or not fuel. Manpower. Fuel a little more iffy. But still, a decent amount of resources. Joey and 5th Carrier don't... Oh, okay. 5th Carrier has a bit more since he's getting a Firefly. Joey, not so much. So it's going to be a little bit harder for Joey to say that was a positive battle. Maybe just forcing the enemy off the point, if they, especially if they grab the VP. Because they're down nearly 300 points. They need the VP right now. And as we saw in mid, with the King Tiger, but slowly racking up those kills. And the Sturm Tiger, which is here, with 27 kills, so easily killed another, and more men. Uh, it's becoming a harder and harder battle, right, for them... Uh, to take if mid but again we'll see if the battle on the right is working by the way again i love the the penals again it actually does tell you it's like hey it is 10 percent less so uh, i i love it honestly telling you exactly what it is love, again the uh di the uh more details they give you with this and again it's a mod that allows more details um for it's a text mod so you can use it in multiplayer so I always like that because, again, it gives the uh, player just a better idea of what's going on. It isn't cheating or anything on those lines. It's just the information the game should provide. Anyway, Stug's opening fire on the KV. S285 uh, on the front, but triple Stug's could easily force that back. We have a... What is that? We have Recon overhead. Oh, White Phosphorus. Which is going to delay the guard, so... Maybe not the best teamwork right there. Recon's providing sight for the Germans, so the Stukes could fire from afar. Once, but again, walking white phosphorus will not allow them to shoot. But this 25 can shoot them. Oh wait, yeah, some of them can't shoot. Hold on, squaring off maybe. Oh, nice double shot on the S25, is killing a single Stug, but the other ones do pull back and will escape. Fireflies moving the mid. Kadmerfer is lying in wait though with King Tiger, that is. Back to... Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, boy. Okay, so Master just got himself a King Tiger with a flak position to hold. Stuka hits the back line. I don't know if it did too much damage. Still have that one. Mortar Carriage is showing that they're vet too and doing uh, quite a bit. Though, again, I think he loses it too with some AT fire. And Tank Trap line just to cause havoc for a counterattack uh, from the Axis. Um, if Street Section tr could try to move in, may need to use Artillery to blast his position. They do drop Smoke, and with that, they might be able to take mid. Because, again, allies uh, still down quite considerably. So, we'll see. Uh, I will say the Germans have... Uh, sorry, I may have to worry about caches, right? Because this left side, they haven't put a cache in. This side, they haven't put a cache in. But the allies have pretty much pushed down a good chunk of resources. Though, the double munitions are helping. 58 to 32. Allies keeping up at 32 to 41. Let's see. Oh, I just realized the allies are just one off. Okay. My... Well, no, no, they have four. Yeah, they... Okay, they do have four caches. Okay, I'm not crazy. And then the... Wait, one, two... Yeah, okay. And then the axes have... They have three. Okay. Storm Tiger took a shot, but looks like he missed. If Rifleman take mid, uh, if G-Section is pushing right with Firefly support. Uh, we have an... Interesting... Uh, we have a Sherman and a Jackson. Along with the Priest, they're still causing a lot of havoc, especially in the back lines. Panzer headquarters could go down, which could be a nice little win, because, again, less AA, and also, it's harder for him to get, uh, vehicles that can really stand up to a lot of stuff. On the left, it looks like the, uh, King Tiger does finish off the EZ-8. They're trying to kill it. Sherman pushing on it. White Phosphorus could screw that attack, because he can't fire in it. Um, but, unfortunately, I don't see AT that really can do it. Depends on the Sherman's pen. Doesn't pen! And now Flack is firing. Jackson moving on in. Again, that mine really would have helped if it was made. Oh, it's the crew! Rick Hedwerfer and Flack could kill it. Hold on. Sherman goes down. 
Jackson can try to finish it off. Kubel, though, directing his fire. King Tiger still alive, although he recruited with the Jackson right there. That's not great. Although, you know, direct strike was used to also kill it, so it wasn't going to live anyway. But damn, they, they used a lot to kill that king. But again, worth it. Master can't exactly easily produce a panther. He's going to have to either build a panther at quarters and then build up that way or just get another king tiger in a few minutes. So we'll, when he gets the resources, I think he's going to get another king. But again, at least it was some losses for Fox. But again, I think Forsaken's generally fine with losing some infantry in that battle because, again, he has 2,000 manpower. The best thing the allies, the Axis have is PBJ. With, and he just got another tiger. Hopefully, you don't lose this one like last time. White Phosphorus came down. Uh, we have a Serpent Big Strike. That was also called in. Sni I love this Sniper providing recon. That's great. But uh, Iftree could be... Uh, the Iftree unit could be revealed by Armor accidentally walking up near it. So you have to be very careful with this. Uh, King Tiger pushing back the MG. But the Fireflies are still there. Again, a Half-Track uh, still there to shoot down aircraft. Pack gun maybe need to be recruited to help against these fireflies. King Tiger gets penned, though gets at the vet too with a counter shot. Wolf Squad trying to get close. Again, Rifleman takes a decent shot. Jackson coming around the corner. Not no real infantry support on this side, and no the AT gun needs a turn. But so far that's not happening. Focusing on the infantry, Jackson's a bigger threat in all honesty. 404, turn your gun! But he's busy killing Soviets, as Soviets are busy with two armies in a Losing a guard force, most likely. Uh, oh boy, SU-85 is barely alive. KB barely alive. Oh, I don't know. King Tiger did escape. Uh, SU-85 and KB-1, not so much. Soviets losing a large chunk of their army, but once again, the Fireflies, after pushing back the Tiger, realize they need to help their ally. And are blasting the Yadpons, or killing with rockets. Second one's moving on in. The Stugs, though, kill a Firefly. A T-Grenade could stop the advance of the Yagpanzer, and they do, but unfortunately all this armor just knocks out the other Firefly, and Fifth Carrier loses a very valuable unit. That's an easy win for the Axis, killing four allied vehicles for one loss. That's a damn good trade. Allies needed to make a big counterattack play, and Desert Fox may be the one to do it. One unit versus multiple, let's see. He misses? Or hits a tiger or something. He is using additional rounds. No knocks out the main gun of the tiger. Which is pretty solid. Dropping smoke. Uh, Stug though still there. And there there's a lot of units. But again, smoke was dropped. So the Stug's have a harder time hitting. Vet 5 or Ken were for right there. And unfortunately, the pack gun kills the Jackson. They do kill the tiger. It's a bit of a win. But again, oh, Stormfix strike coming on in, I think. No, Major Artillery? White Phosphorus. Oh, a weird choice. But I think they saw the infantry. Or like, maybe we can wear, wear it down. S-85 goes down, which is another big blow. I, originally I would say good kill on the Tiger, but again, you just lost two allied units for a Tiger. I don't think that's fantastic. I, I think right now the allies are going to be in a bit of a, a bit, have it, hold on. Okay, I don't know what the Grandier was doing there, uh, unless that was on purpose, but yeah, um, PBJ has enough resources to get more Grenadiers. I think that should, he, he absolutely should do. Uh, Volk squads are fresh off the belt. Maybe some mobile sedan could help, especially with some better infantry that's constantly being deployed. Um, where's that Sturm Tiger? Oh, it's in mid. Just causing hell. Okay. Well, good for you. Good for you. King Tiger uh, did get healed and is still trying to hold mid. Which, again, if the Allies wasted, not wasted, but they tried to push all on the right hand side so much. It's going to be difficult for them to counterattack with the armor reserves they have. Now, luckily, like a player like Forsaken. Still has good army and can commit reserves elsewhere because his front is not that. Uh, I, 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 even though command is going to say that this, the front's a little more of a quiet sector, and I know that's bit the allies a few times. I, I'm honest to say that I think this front is going to be a bit more relaxed because I just don't see the axis, specifically this guy, coming in with a huge army. Because again, you can say, oh, great, I just got into the king. Yeah, but he doesn't have the resources. He's lost it multiple times every time he does push up. And uh, he does not have a frontline force. He has one Volk that's not going to really be all that much. Defensively, I think he can do stuff, but offensively, I think it's going to be a little bit off. Triple Falschermager moving on in, just shredding a lot of the riflemen. Uh, although they were focused on the King Tiger. Multiple allied vehicles trying to go in for that King. 
maybe they can run over this Falschmager blob. Because, again, there's no Faust. We'll see. Another King moving on in. This one's being in multiple directions. But there is a Rakan River. It does get neutralized by the artillery, of all things. Why do you have high explosive on? All right. Well, Sturm Tiger's coming on in. Fires. Uh, Sherman's dead. N nice shot. Uh, although, maybe the Jackson would be a cleaner target. Uh, this King Tiger's still alive, by the way. I jinxed it, but, you know, it's okay. Um, oh, boy. King Tiger hopefully can fire on it. Great shot right there. Uh, Sturm Tiger again. Uh, can't really help. Nice job with the heat rounds against that target. King Tiger again, Master. Uh, doing pretty well. Although, I don't know what the hell you're doing with those false Makers. Uh, yeah, Fishburger lost a good chunk of his men. So maybe just pull that back so you don't lose any more. Though, again, Desert Fox lost a good chunk of his army right there. But Katush Fire seeing the line, but and the allies are taking the right. But, uh, we'll see. Panzer Grandier is being deployed. Okay, better, better. 222 is still alive, which is actually a little shocking to me. Uh, I thought that thing died earlier, but okay. I guess he did survive. Getting resources while artillery currently hits the medical facility. It is interesting we have not seen a counter barrage or any sort of uh, counterplay against the allied artillery, specifically the priests. Uh, but again, I just feel like the two people who do that would be Master, and he's currently been having a real rough time. And also, well, actually, that's it. The Stukas are the only other thing, and they have been more focused on infantry than armor. Speaking of armor, oh, sorry, than artillery. Speaking of armor, though, for my misquote, uh, Tiger's moving on in. Third time's the charm with this guy, hopefully. Um, yeah, I mean, he still has the Stuke support, and the Allies don't have as much armor to counter it. So, we'll see. Artillery's seeing the Panzer Grandier barely alive. Buddy, maybe just pull that back before you die. I love how he threw the, the, the gun into the air. That was pretty funny. Went so far. Anyway, uh, Allies might try to walk on in, but Sturm Tiger is just lying in wait. And, uh, yeah, immediately retreats. I think that was actually artillery from something. Not entirely sure what. Oh, zeroing. Zeroing was dropped. All right. I uh, no idea why you dropped zeroing there. There was a Sturm Tiger right there. So, a bit of a miscommunication, I think, or a miscall. Sturm Big Strike is unable to kill that sniper. Damn. Uh, Tiger trying to help push it back. S55, though, can push back the Tiger. We have a White Phosphorus Strike? Time on target? Uh, I don't think, I think the Tiger's expecting one thing. He's about to get another. It's like, I can take your dumb white phosphorus. Oh god, there's a white phosphorus. Yeah, Panzergrandier is barely alive. Uh, infantry blob pushing on in. Katusha is unable to fire since he just fired for another 80 seconds. So don't expect much. Falschmager, uh, push supported by airstrikes, specifically the airborne assault. It's gonna help reinforce and as well, uh, again, th those, uh, the plane straight swap against armor and infantry respectively. 17 pounder though, knocks out both Stoogs in a decisive blow against uh, PBJ. Great job there, also Firefly helping. So great use by fifth carrier holding the flank. Tiger moves on in. Yeah, great idea, buddy. Oh boy, incendiary is being thrown so I get the, the idea behind it, but AT snares along with, oh, frag bomb, but he waited for the last moment and braced. So solid job there. Sturm Tiger, oh god. There goes the mines, and most of the Royal Engineers. I, I love how the Sturm Tiger just literally comes in just to white men. That's all he does. It's, it, and he hasn't really missed. He's been pretty proactive, which is also layers because he's still a vet too, but he has 39 kills. Rifleman, vet three, 18 kills. Uh, I know there's a difference, but so I always find it funny. Fire was called down in mid, so again, riflemen are slowly going to lose their life. Uh, VP-wise, it's 69. Nice. Uh, versing 283 for the Germans. Uh, small counterattack by the uh, Soviets. Put in harm's way because of Panzergrenadiers in mines along the flank. So they can't go. They have to go straight toward it. Uh, maybe a grenade, which looks like is the plan to throw the, um, out of the cover. Panzergrenadiers throw their own bundle. Hits the uh, penals. Penal's pretty low. Satchel's being thrown, but it's really, I am assuming, just destroy the cover. And it's Volk Blob coming on in. I don't see them holding against that. 
Cervix right comes on in. Uh, building took most of it. Katusha's really going to come in clutch here if they get a great salvo. And okay. I mean, it, it may be delaying action of all things, but it's not the most impressive thing. King Tiger's pushing on left. He is getting very ballsy right now. The push on that flank. Again, the uh, Forsaken still has 700 manpower. So, again, I feel like this is more of a, a full a full charge. I don't think he quite understands the significance of the threat he's just engaged. Right? But, uh, whatever. Ally, uh, Forsaken quickly is going to tell him uh, what for. Anyway, uh, counterattack uh, pushes the Germans off. In mid, it looks like Falschmaker's going to need to focus on the BP. Also, Fishburger probably saving up for King Tiger, as we just saw, because why the fuck not? At, okay, in truth, I don't think... Does he have the Panzer? No, he lost all of his buildings. He has no buildings. The artillery has done a wonderful job at neutralizing all the buildings. Let's see, how many? Three here. Five. Eight buildings have been destroyed by Desert Fox, which, hey, he might not be winning the armor game, but the Artie game, he's being... Or doing a great job in 50 kills as well. So he's doing a solid job right there. Uh, Soviets pushed back by a determined PBJ. Though, again, uh, love that. Love that, like, aerial throw. But uh, even with all that, I just... Uh, and the, those Grandiers are just pe uh, very annoying. And the Panzer Grandiers have done okay. No veteran C4 them yet, but they've done well. Um, two VPs, again, continue to put pressure on the Axis. Um, we have a smoke coming in? Hold on. No, Recon. Recon's coming in. Hopefully, uh, for them to arty. Again, maybe the Mechanized could be a great Priest target. You could easily arty this with a maybe direct shot and hit the whole thing. Um, or just maybe fire whatever uh, floats your boat. By the way, veterancy-wise, uh, you get minus 20% scatter and the 30% recharge. And then 33% range. And the, and the Creeping Garage itself is essentially just a straight line of artillery that can hit. Uh, which looks like uh, they used to kill the pack. So, hey, solid job there. On the far side, Zero is being called in. Stuka misses once again. Uh, King Tiger gets snared, and I think because they're just going to advance through the Zeroing, this King Tiger is d -d -d dead. Rakadenwerfers are on standby, though, and they'll probably kill the EC8. But the triple AT line that just bounced, which is quite hilarious. Uh... Oh, Zeroing. They're still in the Zeroing. Oh, that was a mistake by Forsaken. Should have moved up. Uh, King Tiger may try to hit all that. Flak is also firing. He might actually live. Hold on. Hold on a minute. The M1's not uh, veterancy yet. Their one's very close. Is he actually going to escape? Kubel moving on in. Maybe take some of the hits. Flak Gun's just shredding the riflemen that tried to advance. King Tiger desperately trying to run like hell. AT Gunso moving on in. This could be it for the King if they don't bounce. Oh, they both hit, but he still has health. Oh, boy. Bounce. 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 Miss. One's dead. Holy crap. I would be fucking furious. So... It's like he's so close to death, but he just, just won't die. Uh, for a second, it's like, I'm using that manpower. More AT. More AT. And folk squads are like, yeah, we have enough AT. We're just going to take this for fuel because we, I wouldn't say need it, but Panzer Headquarters would be nice. And having a little extra fuel might not be a bad idea. Also, it could provide a, a, you know, a defensive uh, building to stop an allied incursion. Um, Jackson trying to move in against the King Tiger. Quickly realizes there's too much AT right there. On the far side, though, Volk Squad's trying to retake the VP. 17-pounder was set up to try to hold. And, uh, Artillery's hitting the Tiger. Gets a great shot on it. Looks like they lost Stuke to it. And, yeah, they did. Oh, nice, uh, Fragmentation Bomb. Knocks out some forces right there. Again, uh, Joey still has a solid infantry force, though, uh, right now. And the Vet 3 Mortar. So, if he comes in, uh, and... I would say maybe, like, the British put up a fort assembly so that we, Joey doesn't have to retreat all the way back. But I do like how the artillery is repositioned over here to help them break this spot. Because they're like, listen, <laughs> nice, uh, Katusha, by the way, on 404. 1,500 manpower, so we can get it back, but still. Um, this is the one front I think we can kill. Two Volk squads down. Great jobs. Um, 
Team Tiger trying to move on in. 17 pounder looking the wrong way. Uh, although the infantry blob is over there, so maybe that's what they lose the Ken Werfer. Alright. Jackson. Okay, isn't dead. That's good. I was afraid they'd kill the Rashlon crew. Werfer fires very close to the front. Might be shot. No. Just does hit some of the infantry. Oh! Werfer does get neutralized. Damn, great pre-shot. Man, priests are really, really keeping the allies in the game right now. Because if, if the priests didn't kill these buildings, I think the allies would have lost this game. Like, probably a little while ago. Hell of a shot. Creeping Barrage just helping murder that king. Nice Zermic strike. Knocks out the German forces there. Allowing an unopposed Soviet force to move on in against the VP. Uh, 2 2 2 might die here. That's a lot of PB's forces, which, by the way, he's burned a lot of his resources. Tiger's coming back, but again, lots of long range stuff. You're not going to just easily kill it with a tiger. Uh, Firefly hitting the Jagdpanzer from afar. Again, King Tiger moving on in. We do have some artillery, which could help counteract maybe some of the priests. Sturm Tiger doesn't get that many kills, gets a lot of health, but not a lot of kills. Does finally get to Vet 3, so I guess good job. At least we'll be able to fire every 30 seconds now. Uh, King Tiger taking a number of hits from multiple Jacksons. Could die right here, honestly. Uh, if he's unlucky. Oh, nice shot, though, on the Rifleman. Hold on, Stuka coming on in with fire! Uh, not enough to kill the Rifleman, but will cause a little havoc. And the ET is enough with artillery fire to kill that King Tiger. Air support coming on in as well. Hitting the Falschmangers. Oh, my God. Wiping one of them on the retreat. More air support pushes back the Jagdpanzer. Heavy losses for 404 and Fishburger right there. Great job overall by, um, gotta give it to you, a bit of Desert Fox with the Jacksons and also a bit of Fifth Carrier with his Fireflies and also the air support. So, good job. And again, can't, uh, gotta tip my hat to Forsaken holding the far side. So, again, great job there. AT line is back, firing all sorts of rounds. Again, they're trying to move on in. And now they're flanking. But be an easy killer with the, against this flak with all those AT guns firing upon it. Great kill. Tiger moving on in. Might, nope, not able to kill that lieutenant. Again, trying his best. But he's about to be snared. And Jackson smells a fresh kill. He's going to move on in. On the far side, we have Panzergradiers moving on in, but the KV-1's holding him back. Seems like the Axe is now being the one strangle, uh, being strangled in all directions. Need more men, but like stuff like the Sturm is held back because it's in need of some serious repairs. King Tiger killing the AT guns, but here comes the EZ-8. There goes the insane area on the infantry. Rashlons, not Rashlons. Rifleman could easily snare the king. Does. Now that they fire from afar, especially with the AT, this could be GG. Although, AT guns still, be, still being killed by the bolt. Weirdly, Master's getting slightly better at this. Not incredible, but it's more just pushing back more effectively for seconds than counterattacks. Like, he just lost more AT guns there. Though, uh, the mortar carriers just killed that infantry, so yeah, get the hell out of there before you lose it. Like that. PBJ is out of the game. He has hit the GG button, aka he has dropped. Uh, King Tiger moving in for the kill. Uh, he might actually get it. Hold on. Does kill it. Damn. Well, he is sli getting slightly better. The brain drain on the other Axis force has been pretty severe, losing a number of their best units. Um, KV-1 now just going for a good old-fashioned crush. And while that may not be the most effective with AT firing at it, especially heat rounds, uh... It is enough to weaken this, and a Katusha or something, or KV-1, just firing there, just murders it. My god. Spread your units. Oh, here comes the flames. Nah, 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 nah. You're all dead. You're gonna die. And yeah, uh, Fishburger's gone. He just left. Um, I'm gonna fast forward by two, because I'm thinking this is a GG moment. And I'm pretty certain it will be. King Tiger under heavy fire, gonna be pushed back. And the Axis have uh, pretty much lost all of them. I have 3k manpower, come at me, says Forsaken. Um, again, a lot of the frontline positions the Germans have are just being absolutely shredded. Not really much surviving at all. So, 
Again, he's still got the Sturm Tiger, which could get a nice shot right here. But, alas, Firefly and Air Support probably going to kill it. He's going to try to run. There he goes. And, yeah, the whole front. It's just falling apart. Hot damn. Solid game right there. Allies were pretty low with 26 points. But they pulled it out in the end. And if I had to guess why maybe they pulled it out more so than um, in other games, maybe... Well, first off, the Al I will say the Allies took heavy losses in some of those armor advances. But, one, I think having an for the most part, an unopposed uh, player on the side. Two, I think it was the Priest, specifically Desert Fox, did a really good job at uprooting a lot of the German uh, buildings, which all cuts what they can do, right? It Like, if you can't have half tracks or Jagdpanzers or well, Sadaten or even simple stuff like support guns, you're going to be in a bit of harm's way when your options are more limited. Um, and the, the allies have full access to all of their abilities. But, which, by the way, top damage goes to 5th carrier. And top damage goes to Joey. On the axis side, we have ourselves top damage going to 404. 69,000. Nice. Close to 70. Uh, with PB and J getting uh, top kills. So, solid stuff right there. Um, really solid stuff. Uh, but, yeah, no. Again, I do want to give a special shout out to 5th carry division. Um, aka Dr. Angel, for swimming this game and backed up by Joey G240 for being the Patreon supporter who said, hey, I want to put this up. I want to highlight it. And by God, yeah, absolutely. It was great. Um, again, uh, solid game, all things considered. Um, here, let's double check some of the MVPs. Jackson, 20,000 damage. Artillery was probably the best by Desert Fox. Forsaken, Easy 8s. Uh, yeah, deploy a lot. Maybe not the most kills, but solid damage. Uh, I mean, okay, eight, maybe not, but, you know, they did okay, and I thought he did a good job harassing, uh, was it Master on his side? Uh, the SU-85s, again, less of them, and they definitely got more. Penals were pretty good. KVs, uh, yeah, a number of them died. Fireflies really came in clutch, just going back and forth, sniping armor. Though, again, I feel like even they were put in harm's way by some of those armor charges by the Stoogs and the Yagpanzers, which, again, great counters to tank destroyers on the Allies' side, but even then, I think the Fireflies... Definitely did a lot to really seal the deal. Uh, Stuka did not do as much as I thought it would, and you deploy a lot of kings that died. But, Master, I would say you slowly got better uh, as the game progressed, right? You definitely tried to recover. The Fulcher Makers definitely got kills, 83. Um, though, I was that as much as the Rifleman? I'm actually kind of curious. Uh, rifleman, I, it doesn't say. Rifleman did... Okay, well... We'll say the rifleman did about 11k, roughly. And the, how much? Oh, that's from Desert Fox Gamma. How much did these false yeah, false do? Uh, 13,000. Okay, so they were better. Okay, okay. Um, just kind of curious on how they well. Oh, well, they did. But although I will say the uh, rifleman did get Sturm Tigered a lot, so that was pretty fun uh, to watch that come on in. Stoogs, I thought, was a good uh, good call against counteracting a lot of the tank destroyers. I thought they performed pretty damn well. Uh, Jagdpanzers, as well, did extremely well. So, again, having trouble with those uh, tank destroyers... Uh, sorry, tank destroyers. Having trouble yeah, with allied tank destroyers, I was right. Yeah, call that in. But, uh, yeah, lots of Volk got deployed, but unfortunately, a lot of them perished. But, yeah, solid game, all things considered. Let me know what you guys think down below. Once again, if you want to support the channel, like and subscribe. Submit a replay, Gmail and Discord down below. Uh, t check out uh, my Patreon as well down below. And finally, if you would like some uh, Great Shot Productions merch, that is by Fourth Wall, also down below. But this has been Great Shot 17. Thanking all of you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is Great Shot 17. And before y'all go, let me give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Joey G240, Malam, Big Cooch, Afaria, Ace, Pyro Shark, Tony B95, Epic Pleb. Thank you all for your incredible support and in helping me grow my channel and support my channel and everything I do. Thank you, and to the rest of you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.